Warning. This podcast may prove to be damaging to the comfort of closely held presuppositions. Remember to practice Acts 17.11 and examine the scriptures daily to see whether these things are so. is changing rapidly. Wars and rumors of wars are abundant. Civil unrest, economic collapse, a global economic reset, natural disasters, and the second coming of Jesus Christ is on the horizon. Are you prepared? Welcome to Truth Fed. Greetings, Truth Seekers, and welcome back to the broadcast. Today is Friday, March 27th, 2015. I'm Sean, and the website is www.truthfed.com. I apologize uh, for the delay in getting the show out, and uh, it's just been a crazy week, and hopefully next week uh, we can get it uh, out a little more consistently and hopefully do three or four episodes instead of just two uh, like I've had to do this week. Uh, but, you know, what I want to talk about today is just this reality, uh, you know, there, that there's a spirit of evil uh, that's just being let loose. And I say this often, but the times are upon us. A spirit of darkness is covering the land, and especially the land here in the United States of America. And I don't know about all of you, but I can just feel the presence of darkness and maybe some of you understand what I'm talking about. Maybe some of you understand what I'm talking about. And I've been struggling, and I've been, you know, and I've been pretty, cl- pretty open and transparent about this. That I, you know, I've been struggling these last few days, last couple of weeks, uh, with just the spiritual warfare that's taking place in my life. And uh, I would say personally, and uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you would agree with me that the spiritual war itself has ramped up. It's ramped up. In my opinion, I think wickedness and evil on a level never seen in the history of this world is about to be unleashed, is being unleashed currently. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's months or years down the road. Uh, I think we're looking at days, weeks. I believe this because I can feel it in my spirit. I believe this because I can see it in the headlines. I believe it because the Holy Word of God tells us uh, that this will be the case. And I think in the coming days and weeks that some things are going to happen. Things are going to come upon this world that's going to stun everyone. Things are going to happen and people aren't going to deny that it's the Lord at work things are about to get really, really dark. And I'm not saying this is a scare tactic. You know, this isn't uh, one of those shows where we run a bunch of advertisements and sell a bunch of products and things trying to make money. I mean, this is just a show that I do because I feel led to do it by the Holy Spirit. Because I feel like God has called me to be a watchman on the wall. So there's no agenda here other than to warn and to do my duty as the watchman, and I can say that in my spirit, what I feel, and I can't tell you what it is, is that in the very near future, some very strange things are going to happen, and it's going to continue to get even darker and darker. But here's the thing. Those of us who are in Christ, who live in this time, we live in this time for a reason. God has called us for a time such as this. We must be a light in this darkness. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the story of Esther. If you're not, I recommend that you get familiar with it. It's a, it's a, I think it's a very important uh, book in the Bible. But Esther 4.14 says, For if you keep silent at this time, Relief and deliverance shall arise for the Jews from elsewhere, but you and your house will perish. And who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this and for this very 
occasion. There may be some of you listening to this broadcast, and maybe even myself. We were chosen to do a work in the most spectacular time, in the most incredible time, in the most strange time, in the most awesome time, in the most frightening time in human history. You were chosen by God out of billions of people who've lived since the beginning of time to be one of the people who is a light in the darkness during one of the most incredible times in human history. And we need to rise to that occasion and we need to be that light in the darkness. But in order to do that, we have to understand that we are dealing with a spiritual war. We have to understand and accept. We have to settle it in our hearts that things are going to get dark, okay? And for many Christians around the world, that darkness is already there. The people in the Middle East, those Christians who are being slaughtered in the Middle East in the most brutal ways possible, do you not think that they think to themselves, I'm living in great tribulation? Isn't their suffering the definition of tribulation? Don't think, don't be so arrogant as to think that you, because you live in the Western world, will not have to face any challenging times. Now, it is possible. There's a lot of people coming out, and they're just putting their necks out there, putting, the, putting it all on the line, saying that they, they believe God is telling them that, they, that there's going to be a rapture, and it's going to be a Passover rapture, and that here in the next few coming days, we could be out of here. And that might be true, and if that is true, hallelujah, praise God. Lord Jesus, I hope that is true. I do. I hope it with all my heart. There's nothing I want more than to be summoned into the clouds right now as I sit here and speak. But I'm also not going to be so arrogant as to think that Christians around the world may have to suffer, that are suffering, and that Christians throughout the centuries have had to suffer persecution, that I myself won't ever have to worry about that. I understand that that possibility is there if God chooses that for me. I don't want that. I pray that God doesn't choose that for me, that he delivers me from that. I pray that there, you know, that there, that there is a rapture and that it is coming and it is any moment now. I'm watching for Jesus. I'm being prepared. I'm trying to prepare my heart every day. I'm getting on my knees and I'm repenting and I'm asking for help to deal with things that I'm struggling with and, and temptations that are, that are constantly knocking on my door. And, and I'm asking God for forgiveness of sins and that he shows me mercy and that he shows me worthy, you know, finds me worthy to escape all the things coming upon this earth and to stand before the Son of Man. And I tell God every single day, please, I want to hear from you. Have mercy on me. Spare me that hour of trial. I pray, Lord, that when I stand before you, that you will say, well done, good and faithful servant, and not say, depart from me, I never knew you, you who work iniquity, you who work lawlessness. I'm watching and I'm ready. But I've settled it in my heart, and I hope you settle it in your heart that the reality is, is that things are getting dark and we might be here for some darkness. And we have to understand what we're up against. We have to understand and accept and settle in our hearts that we are in a spiritual war. And things have gotten so dark, have they not? Have they not gotten so dark and so just terrible? I'm going to show you some examples of some things that really... uh, it just really got at me. Uh, first, I want to read uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. It says, But understand this, this is Paul talking, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. Does that sound like the people that you are surrounded with today? Are they not lovers of themselves, completely self-concerned? I mean, those of you who have Facebook, most of you have a Facebook account. Just look at what people post. There's a few people that I just, I, what I, honestly, what I need to do is just go in and remove them 
because I'm sick of seeing their selfies and self this and self that. And look at me here and look at me there. They're going to be lovers of money and arouse by ordinate greedy desires for wealth. Proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. Look what I did. Look what I did. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents. Have you seen the way children's di- children disrespect their parents? I mean, some of the things I see kids doing and saying to their parents when I'm walking through a grocery store, I think, oh my gosh, honestly, if I had behaved like that, I wouldn't be alive today to do this podcast. And I mean that literally. They're ungrateful, unholy, and profane. That is a description of society, not just in the United States, but in many places in the world in today's time. That description has never fit a society better than it fits today. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appetencement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct. Don't we see that today? Oh, anything goes. Let's just not be offensive. Oh, let's not offend anyone. You know, and let's just throw all morals out there. Let's just be really loose on morals. You know, let's not call that sexual perversion. We might offend somebody. Uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. That is, at the very least, the United States of America. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. Don't you think people care more about vain amusements, their entertainment, than they do God? Lord, help us. God, help us. Let me tell you why this country's in big trouble, other than the fact that we are Mystery Babylon the Great. I know some of you argue with me, but we are. Let me just go over some headlines. That just shows the just the ridiculous direction that this country is headed, and the world is headed. U.S. Here's a headline from uh, Free Beacon: U.S. caves to key Iranian demands as nuke deals come together. Can you believe that? I, I'm just amazed that the the country I live in is giving in and allowing and giving in the nuke demands from the leading supporter of terrorism in the world who openly says they want to destroy Israel and openly says they want to destroy the United States. I'm I'm just mind-boggled. I can't believe this. The United States is already under judgment. I've tried to tell you this. The leaders that you have over you is your judgment already. Do you understand that? This country's already under judgment. We've been given up to everything. God has given up to our vile, wicked desires and given us leaders who are leading us straight into the pits of hell. And what's coming upon this country is going to be judgment on the level of Sodom and Gomorrah, if not worse. And people will think, well, you're not a patriot. Uh, <laughs> and that just cracks me up. It's like, so if I don't, if I don't condone and celebrate wickedness, then I'm not a patriot. And just so you know, I support and, and, and follow the Lord, God. And I'm not a citizen of this world. I'm going to pass it through. So while in the meantime, the United States is caving and giving into Iranian nuke demands, they're turning on Israel. U.S. declassifies documents revealing Israel's nuclear program. This is... This is unbelievable. Obama revenge is what it says here. Uh, let me get this refreshed here. Obama, Obama revenge for Netanyahu's Congress talk? Question mark. 1987 report on Israel's top secret nuclear program released in unprecedented move. 
and a development that has largely been missed by the mainstream media. Surprise, surprise, because this government ran. The Pentagon early last month quietly declassified a Department of Defense top secret document detailing Israel's nuclear program, a highly covert topic that Israel has never formally announced to avoid a regional nuclear arms race in which the U.S. until now has respected by remaining silent. Now, many will look at that and go, oh, well, Israel's bad, Israel this, Israel blah, 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 blah. Here's what I just here's what I want to tell you. You need to read Genesis 12:3, and that's all you need to know. Genesis 12:3, that's all you need to know. You turn your back on Israel and you start supporting a group who supports terror around the world, expect judgment. But let's just deal with our own sin, shall we? These three articles have to do with the murder of babies in the womb. Listen to this. This is where the culture's mindsets went. This guy named Matthew Galasius, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Matthew Galasius. The title of this article is Matthew Galasius, Watching My Wife Give Birth Made Me More Pro-Abortion. How, I mean, isn't that just the worst thing to say about seeing your child born? Is saying that it makes you more pro-abortion? I mean, how sick is that? Apparently, Vox, executive editor, Matthew Yegulis, however you say his name, is unaware that his newborn son will one day be able to read. Unbelievable. You watch the birth of your son, which is one of the greatest miracles that God's ever given, and your reaction is, man, that makes me, you know, even more for abortion. That is unbelievable. Then it gets a little bit worse. New York Assembly passes bill allowing shooting babies through the heart with poisons to kill them. The New York State Assembly p- proved that promoting the best interest of a woman apparently includes pushing late-term abortions. This is babies who have a beating heart and they're being injected with they're going to be injected with a chemical that poisons their heart and kills them. For years the state legislator has been embroiled in a battle over packing a package of bills designed to push the interest of women. See, feminism is just a lie, folks. All it does is... <laughs> it's just unbelievable. I, I'm, just, I'm just, sh- just shocked that people are this ignorant. The bills have been held up in part because it includes a measure that would promote late-term abortions. Well, now it's been passed. Oh, you want to kill your baby who's... And you're in the middle of a late, you, you know, you're, you're, you're late in your pregnancy and you're like, you know what? I don't think I want this baby after all. Stick a needle in his heart and kill it. Then it gets even darker. A woman suspected of, this is what, I, this is where, I, this is the, this is where it's all headed, folks. Because aside from just decaying society... We are moving, we're moving into demonic things now, too. And we've pointed out some of those things. I've done videos on just some of the demonic things that are taking place and just how sick people are, are becoming. Uh, but listen to this. Woman suspected of cutting unborn baby from woman's belly won't face murder charges. That is correct. A woman suspected of cutting an unborn baby from a woman's belly in Longmount won't face murder charges for the baby's death. First of all, how messed up is it that a woman would attack another woman, cut her open, and take her baby out of her? I mean, is that not demonic? And of course, she's not going to face charges because, according to our sick culture, she, I mean, she's going to face charges for the assault, but not for the death of the baby. That's not going to be called murder. Why? Because our society says that a baby in the womb is not a person. Its life doesn't matter. Now, if you think that this is the time, and and folks, I'm just covering a couple little small things. The darkness that is over this country and over this world is beyond describable. And if you think that judgment isn't coming, you are kidding yourself. And you can get, you can go to the comments and you can call me a bigot and blah, 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 whatever it is you want to call me. That's fine. Because there's a day coming very, very soon when God's judgment is going to fall on this country and upon this world in such a way 
that's so bad and so unbelievable and so unconceivable that you won't be able to even stand, much less write your ridiculous comment. There's going to be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth and distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Do you understand that things are going to be so bad, so dark, so frightening, that people will literally die of a heart attack because they're so afraid of what they are seeing, what they are witnessing. The abyss is going to be opened. Revelation chapter 9, go read it. And demons are going to crawl on this earth. And vile creatures. And you can mock it and laugh at it and and call it whatever you want. But to those who have ears to hear and eyes to see and whose hearts are open to the word of God, they understand. And we need to get on the ark because the flood is coming. And it's not a flood of water, but it's a flood of the wrath of God. And the ark is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the question you need to be asking yourself as we move into these ridiculously dark times is do you know him? And more importantly, does he know you? Because he's coming. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. Who do you think he's talking to when he says, I am coming quickly? He's talking to the generation that is seeing these things coming upon the earth. Luke 21, 32, Truly I tell you, this generation, those living at that definite period of time will not perish and pass away until all has taken place. In other words, those who see the uh, prophecy starting to be fulfilled will see it all, that generation. And we are that generation. And blessed are those Luke 12, 37, Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. Folks, it's getting dark. A spirit of darkness is upon this world. Things are getting crazy. You're going to see economic fallout. You're going to see more famine. You're going to see more disease. You're going to see more people killing each other, eating each other, doing all these vile things to one another. You're going to see government murdering people by the millions. And you're going to see things coming out of the sky and things taking place in the heaven that are going to be so frightening that people are going to have heart attacks because they're so afraid of what it is. And demons are going to crawl out of the abyss and torture men, those who do not have the seal of God. I would get on the ark that is Jesus Christ and I would do it soon because the time is up. Is there a rapture? I'm hoping that there is. I believe the scriptures point to it. Does the scriptures tell us when, they're, when it's going to be? That's definitely up for debate. As you've probably noticed, because many will say there is no rapture. Many will say there is one. It's pre-tribulation. I would say, uh, I think there is one, but I don't think it's pre-tribulation. I think it's pre-wrath. Um, all I know is that I'm watching and waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's not a day that goes by where I don't pray the prayer. God have mercy on me. Lord God, find me worthy to escape all the things coming upon this earth and to stand before the son of man. That's my prayer. And if he has decided that we are going to go through some of these times, then I want to be a light in the darkness, which is what I'm trying to do right now, which is why I take the time to read these scriptures to you and to warn you, trying to be a light in the darkness. And that's that's the best we can do, folks. And we need to do it. We can't be silent. We can't be ignorant and act as though these things are not coming. I want to be blessed. Blessed are those whom the master, when he comes, finds watching. Which means those who are not watching are not blessed. Do you understand? 
be one of those people who's watching, but don't dare get arrogant and think to yourself, I'm so glad that I'm not like these other Christians around me who can't see this and can't see that. Remember the parable of the Pharisee who he goes and he prays and he says, Lord, thank you that I'm not like this tax collector over here because I tithe and I do this and I do that and I have this Sabbath and I blah, 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 blah. Because Jesus said the one who was justified was not the Pharisee, but the tax collector, collector who beat his chest and would not even look up to heaven, but said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's the correct posture. Yes, we need to practice righteousness and holiness. Yes, we need to follow the commandments and live our, you know, and live for Jesus and make him our everything. But don't get caught up in judging your brothers and sisters and thinking that because you do this and you do that and they don't do this and they don't do that, that somehow you're better or in a better position. Don't be that way. Because the one beating his chest and saying, have mercy on me, was the one who was justified, not the one who followed all these laws perfectly and then dared to judge the brother next to him. What you need to be focusing on is your relationship with Jesus. Being in relationship with him, an intimate relationship where the number one thing on your mind, the number one thing you need to be bathing yourself in the word of God you need to be on your knees praying and asking for mercy and dealing with those sins immediately. And if you have one, you know, because don't be, don't be surprised, folks. And I've even dealt with this myself recently. Don't be surprised when the enemy starts bringing up one of those old temptations, starts trying to get you to go back to the old you. Don't be surprised when that happens. And when it does, put on that full armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles is describing like the cunningness of him. He's intelligent. He knows your weakness. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, folks. This is not a war against men. But it's against the principalities and against the powers and against the rulers of darkness of this age. Against the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Gird your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. It's getting dark. It's going to get more challenging. There's going to be more attacks. You're going to need to persevere. You're going to need to put on that armor of God. You're going to need to bathe yourself in the word of God and wash yourself in the Word of God. You need to be praying. And you need to draw near to Jesus and ask Him to draw near to you. He is the ark. And the door to the ark, I believe, is closing soon. And darkness is pouring out. I'm going to be fasting uh, for these next seven days, starting Sunday through Saturday as we move into the blood moon. Now, as you know, we had the big black solar eclipse, which took place on the 20th. Now we're going into the blood moon on the 4th, which is the third blood moon. Some call it the third watch. The third watch. So I'm going to be fasting, and the purpose of my fast for the next seven days is to do the Daniel fast, which is the typical fast that I do, which is basically water to drink, fruits, vegetables, and nuts to eat. No sugar, nothing pleasurable, no bread, no meat, no meat products. And the purpose of the fast is to draw near to God. It's to... It's to not feed the flesh, but to feed the spirit instead. It's to put the spirit man in charge instead of the fleshly man in charge, which helps us to draw near to God, which helps us to hear, hear, helps us to hear God, helps us to 
it's a very important spiritual discipline that I highly recommend that everyone do frequently in their walk with the Lord. It doesn't always have to be seven days. Sometimes it can be a day. Um, but I'm going to be doing seven days as we lead into the blood moon and lead into Passover. And uh, the whole purpose will be to draw near to God and to hopefully hear from God and to just discern the times that we're in. Because I believe that it's getting dark. It's getting dark, folks. The good news is, is you have the light and you are of the light, not of darkness. And if you're following Jesus and if you're in relationship with him and you're on that narrow path and you're in submission and obedience to the Father, you're not going to be deceived by all this wickedness coming upon the earth. And you have no need to fear. You've not been given a spirit of fear. God is going to care for you. Just be ready to be obedient. Be ready to do whatever it is that God has chosen you to do. Because maybe, just maybe, you exist. You were born into this generation. Your whole purpose for being on this planet was for a time such as this, to be a light in the greatest darkness that the world has ever seen. And if that's true, and I believe it is, hallelujah, praise God. Do you realize how blessed you are to be chosen for a time such as this? That is the podcast for today. And uh, hopefully it blessed some people. I actually tried to do this podcast last night, and again, it just wasn't working out. I wasn't, you know, and so I decided to push it off till today uh, because I just want it to be right. And uh, I think we're, you know, like I said, we're moving into these times and I, I'm just trying to prepare myself, prepare my own heart and, and hopefully help some other people prepare theirs. And uh, hopefully, hopefully I've done my job and done it well. And I hope that you have it all, you all have a blessed weekend. Have a blessed weekend. Uh, if you want to join me in the fast, I'm going to be starting it on Sunday all the way through Saturday. So I'll be, you know, so on Easter day, I will start eating normally again. Um, uh, but these next seven days, starting with Sunday through Saturday, just to draw near to God. So if you want to join me in that, you can. Hey, if you want to support the mission of truth, you can do that by going to truthfed.com forward slash help and become a Patreon subscriber. This is not donations or anything like that. Uh, you simply subscribe, and uh, those who subscribe, they support the mission, which helps pay for hosting and the website and all that stuff. And then I create a personalized video, and uh, hopefully uh, for those uh, subscribers, it comes out once a month, and uh, hopefully it can add some more perks uh, for the people who do uh, who do subscribe. And I thank all of you for all of your support. But if you really want to support me more than anything, more important than becoming a Patreon subscriber or any of that stuff is prayer. <laughs> I need it bad, folks, for me and my family, uh, for my wife and for my son and just for my family and my household. Uh, we're under a lot of attacks, a lot of spiritual attacks. So please pray for me. And, uh, and I pray for you. And uh, so... That is it. That's all I got. Have a blessed weekend. Peace and grace be with you. God bless.